Excellent. Hello, and welcome to Unplanned Trek, the award show that is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Yes, we are the Hey Hey It's Saturday of Star Trek podcast. <laughs> I am your host, Andrew Hogan. That makes me the Daryl Summers of Star Trek fandom. And with me is the Aussie ostrich of Star Trek fandom, I'll Isaac, the been, main man. Thank you. Oh. And how wonderful it is, is to be here at Wine Cinema. Thank you to Graz and the staff here for having us today. Oh. We've also got on the line at 4 a.m., I think, in L.A. at the moment, but it is still on First Contact Day. It's Mark Cartier from our headquarters. How are you, Mark? I'm excellent. How are you? Good, thank you. Yeah, it's I, good to see all of you. What a great crowd. How exciting to hang out with a bunch of Australians on First Contact Day. Eh? It's it, it's what everybody yeah. should be doing. Now, you won't understand this, Mark, but you have been bestowed upon you the dicky knee of our <laughs> Star Trek fandom. <laughs> Just take it. It's fine. <laughs> I, was say, I have no yeah. idea what you're saying right now. Yeah. <laughs> Google it later just yeah. when we're off. No, no, don't Google when we're off. it. Okay, don't, don't, don't Google it. Right. Anyway, yeah. explain to people what we're doing. Well, uh, um, every other podcast that's out there reviews po- review Star Trek and yeah. talks about why it's good, why it's bad, four stars, mm. podcast done. We don't do that. We're no. the award show that nobody asked for. So when they were making this movie 25, 30 years ago, I'm sure they were thinking who are the best three characters, who are the worst was- three characters, yeah. what fights are going to count and how many people died. That's right. And if they were thinking that, they were thinking about tonight where we are celebrating all these things and more in our um, silly and irrelevant medals that we've got. So we've just watched Star Trek First Contact with a few dozen of our warm, dear personal friends. Aussie nerds! Go to- <laughs> and, Aussie um, nerds. <laughs> Jam <laughs> nerds. <laughs> <laughs> they do exist. Um, now, oh, obviously, we all know what happens in the movie, but, you know, for those, oh, synopsis. Who, for those who don't very quickly, is just the fact that, uh, that so uh, Picard's dodgy ex-girlfriend turns up, um, Disses him a lot, tries to crack onto data. At the same time, Farmer Hoggett invents warp drive. The end. <laughs> Good movie. <laughs> Tell you what, I think I, you know, if I could make one change to that film, I would have just given Zephyr Cochran a pig. It would have made it. It would have made it. Yeah, it that'll do. So much better. So when when this film, when the series is rebooted, you know. Mm. Oh, Three minutes from now, um, <laughs> by Netflix or somebody, um, that's what's going to happen. Yep. We're going to get a pig in there, and Mark's going to do it for us. And we get executive producer credits for coming up with the idea. I, I, I was there. Just, I that's got, not yeah, no. I'm yeah. taking it. That, yeah. You know, it's in the contract. Oh. I get out of you what, what you make. I'll, I'll tell, <laughs> Which, I'll yeah. tell Shinzon on, on you. <laughs> oh, don't, Let's get on to our first award. Okay, so the first award today is the Picard Medal, which is like the Brownlow Medal of awards. It's a three, two, and one style. Mm-hmm. For who was the best character in um, in First Contact, and um, this week it bestowed on me to keep an eye out for that. Yeah, because it's too hard for me. Yeah. Now I'm giving one vote today. I don't know if you guys spotted him, but did you guys spot Neelix in this movie? Yeah. I did. Yeah, I knew you guys were nerds. I knew yeah. I liked you. So um, the actor that plays Neelix in Voyager was on the hollow deck um, and let everybody in before the, all the guns went crazy. I know. That's right. Yeah. And, and he was a welcoming host. No, well, he told them they, were, they weren't dressed right. Well, well we, yeah. He's not, not going to let anyone. He wouldn't let us in. Not no shoes, <laughs> mate. No, yeah. no, no. We're back of the line for us. Back of the yeah. line, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I gave Neelix a point. But I'm going to get you guys to help me out for my two and three votes. So for two votes, I've got, well, for my, my two other characters, I've got suggestions of Deanna Troy. So um, You didn't hold a liquor. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what I liked about her. <laughs> she, she, she didn't hold her accent yeah, either. That's right. <laughs> did, did you think that, like, like Marina Sirtis just turned up to the movie and said, I'm not talking in that stupid voice I've done that it for you seven made years. in seven yeah, years. Yeah. I'm just going to talk like me. And they went, whatever, you turned up. Fine. Yeah. She also had maybe the line of the movie, which is when she said to Data and Picard, would you three like to be left alone? Yeah. Oh, um, I quite oh, like that. Very so, sexy. So that, that's what I'm putting on as the argument for Deanna. But the argument for Zephyr Cochran is, um, well, one, he, 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 of course, broke the warp barrier, but he also drank throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, he danced and sang throughout the movie. And um, I think it was because um, back in back in the 90s, Rewind Cinema didn't exist yet. But yep. I was thinking at the end of the movie, a well, great way to, to introduce the Vulcans into um, the Earth society would be to come here, have a couple of drinks and watch a movie. 
That is exactly yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. To, to be honest, drinking throughout the movie and dancing through it was pretty much the way that I watched First Contact. <laughs> back, back in the nineties. Back in ninety six. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So, so um, if you're uh, if you're going to go with Deanna Troy, cheer now. Yeah. Oh, that, 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 that does sound like a Zephyr Cochran vote. If you want Zephyr Cochran to get the three votes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, two for Deanna. Two for Deanna and three for Zeph. Three for Farmer yeah, Hobbit. Absolutely. We yeah, so we're, we're a yin and yang combo. So while I was looking out for the best three characters, Mr. Hogan here was looking out for the worst three. And this is an award we call the Keiko O'Brien Medal. I may well have been just tweeting on my phone, but that's okay. We can go with the, <laughs> yeah. with the paying attention to the movie. Yeah. So my one vote <laughs> is the idiot who invented the MagSafe locks on the deflector ah. dish. Like, like these things are meant to be used in an emergency, and most of the time in an emergency, you're in a bloody hurry. <laughs> but no, firstly, you've got to have two mates with you. That's to hard to do get. it. It's hard to get two mates. Well, I've got, I've got... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, us. I mean, this guy, this guy on the screen, he's, he's okay. And, and secondly, they're really bloody hard to pull out. It's like, what, they don't have WD 40 mm, in the future. Mm, that's right. <laughs> that is just so <laughs> stupid. Yeah. So, the guns don't blow away where you know no, oh, that's right. The guns sit yeah. there, yeah. but you can float away. Yeah. Mm. Oh, don't get me don't get me started yeah. on if they can create gravity inside the ship while they can't create it outside the ship. There's no reason for that. So, my potential two and three votes are: um, firstly, Geordie LaForge for utterly ignoring basic temporal prime directive and telling him about the statue. Now. I'm pretty dumb, right? But even it's I true. know. Don't, don't, don't agree so quickly. Oh. <laughs> don't, don't tell him about the statue. That's not going to go well, mm. right? Um, and my other option is the bloke on a bike who gets blown up at the very start. <laughs> now, the reason for that is basically because he's a bloke on a bike. <laughs> Bloke's on a bike. He's, he's, he's not even wearing lycra. And which would actually make him a guarantee to get the three votes. Yeah. But it's like, what are you doing? It's like we know from Back to the Future, we have hoverboards mm -hmm. by this time. By and now. And he's riding it. Oh, actually, yeah, it's a good point, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have it? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm taking my hoverboard home. Of course please. you are. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so we've got two options. So, bloke on a bike. No one likes you bloke on a bike. Oh, I love that better. Don't doesn't mean they like the bloke on the boat. Okay, don't confuse me. <laughs> Jordi LaForge? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Woo. Two with the three. Two votes, bloke on a bike. Three votes, um, Jordi LaForge. Um, just for your record, bloke hmm. on a bike. His name's Trevor. Trevor on a bike. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if, we, if we don't know the name of any character that we're ever doing the show, I get to name them. It's true. He's even named the nacelles before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Tango and Cash <laughs> are the two nacelles on the Enterprise D. The D. The, on the yeah, D, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The fat one. Murdoch. Yeah, the fat one. Mm. Yeah. Well, I've we like the fat thought it was like the Murdoch. I can never remember the, mm. guy, the character's name, but Howling, I was thinking it was Murdoch. Howling Mad. Yep. Yeah. Howling yeah. Murdoch. Yeah, Reg Barkley. Yep. The guy and Hassling, he, yeah. he kind of led Geordie down that road. Well, he I, did. I, he started I, I it. I it. Yeah, great pilot, can fly yeah. anything. We can't argue with Riker. No, we can't. We, exactly. we could give Barkley a half point, maybe. Just give him a point for no reason. Yes. All right. <laughs> Make up the rules as we go. So what have we got next? Next, we've got the Mourn Hub Medal, which Ooh. is awarded for any romance or sexy shenanigans that we might see next. <laughs> yeah, so the Mourn Hub Medal actually, again, fell to yeah, you no this week, Mr. Hogan. Who likes that? Oh, <laughs> go away. Don't you get involved, Shins. You're a potty mouth and I don't like you. It's, it's with you. Oh, it's me, is it? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was, just, <laughs> I was just talking to myself. I know, I'm aware. Yeah. yeah, okay. Um, well, obviously, there's um, there was uh, Picard and Reich, no, Picard and Data and the Phoenix. Uh, just basically, yes. yes. Just now, and I'm not sure whether the, whether the Phoenix quite gave consent. It was there, though. Yeah, but they were they, there was some touching, yeah. So there was some inappropriate touching going on, and I don't know there. about warships and. You there know. was inappropriate touching with the Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, which wouldn't be the first inappropriate touching during a Star Trek movie. It might be. Uh, it probably was, yeah. <laughs> okay, so there was that. Um, <laughs> the <laughs> just for those who didn't hear, that was uh, stroking the shaft. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Which is a youth. Yeah. 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 And by shaft, you mean... Penis. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I've just got to clarify that for some of the audience don't yeah. you know, quite get the whole euphemisms thing. <laughs> um, there, there was um, there was Borg Queen and Data 
Although, you know, that one was a little bit iffy because I really? think, well, I think, no, I think most of it was just her teasing. Yeah, like, well, he bragged. He, oh, he did actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. But well, I, I want people to know when you say that you're, when we've got multiple techniques, uh, that can mean two. It can. <laughs> it doesn't mean lots. Also, if your definition of bragging is I last had sex eight years ago, <laughs> you, you need to reassess the concept of bragging because I'd be like, yeah, well done, buddy. Mm. That's excellent. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I, yeah, okay. Fully functional, pretty good. So there was that. Um, there was, again, there was there was Picard mm. pretending to give himself to the ball queen. Yes. Yeah, a, a form of love. Of course, it was all bullshit. Picard also got a snog on the holodeck. Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. Mm. And, and him and Lily got a little kiss at the mm. end, mm. which is, you know, so basically in this episode... Uh, Picard was like out Kirking Kirk. Mm, he was Kirk. He there was, was a, Kirk. There was yeah. a lot of Kirking yeah. going on there, including going back to the original time without explaining how you're getting there. Oh, yeah, totally. That. <laughs> That's yeah. a total Kirk move. Yeah. And see, this explains why I always used to wonder about this movie. Why didn't he just program the holodeck with could there be 25 Tommy guns just lying on a table? He didn't. Why did he need the rest of the Dixon Hill stuff? Mm. Because it was just stupid. Well, the guy with the nose. The guy with the yeah, Nicky the nose, right? Yeah, Nicky. Yes. Yeah, Nicky, don't you know him? He's a good bloke. He's, good, he's a good friend of the show. Yeah, I didn't have him in line for the Picard medal. No, no. He's, he's a dickhead. Yeah. But anyway, the yeah. point being that, um, like, because he because he figured if I've got to get a Tommy gun, I, I want a bit of a snog from the blondie. Mm -hmm. And you know what? In the middle of a terribly dangerous Her name invasion. Is Ruby. Oh, Ruby. Ruby. Of course you Ruby. know. It's one yeah. of his mountains of pages. It, it is. One of, the, <laughs> one of my medals. <laughs> have you um have you met her before? Did yeah, you know Ruby? Yeah, did you know her? Oh, I know Ruby very well. Of course you do. <laughs> is there anyone in Hollywood you don't know? No. <laughs> no one that he doesn't want to know. <laughs> so, Mark, did I miss any that, that you think I could have got? Sexiness. The, uh, the Enterprise entered the time vortex. Mm, that was sexy. Yeah. Oh, was that why you were so excited? I was. I was. Um, also, Troy and Zephyr Cochran. Yes. Yeah. That oh, was. yeah. I yeah. spent the last 20 minutes trying to keep his hands off of me. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's that so was a brag. That's so romantic. Humble brag, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's a yeah. in that dance. But yeah. It's, it's, it's Farmer Hoggett, which means he was cheating on Magda Zabensky. We can't do that. No. That's un Australian. Yeah. The, 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 the medal doesn't look at ethics, though. <laughs> oh, no, that's not much that we do on this show, it does actually. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're going to straighten up. We're going to go to Mark in the States. Um, he was doing the wharf medal, which is for any fighting. Now, if anyone oh. <laughs> needs a bit of a break, this is going to take a while. Um, I'm not writing this down, Mark. If you could send me a fax of, the, of your name, I will. A fax. <laughs> I will send it to you. I'm going to warn everybody. I, I, the Wharf Award, and uh, would you like to explain it? Uh, the Wharf Medal is for any fighting at all that happens in the episode. You don't have to win. You don't have to be good at the fight. You just have to be there. And for anybody under the age of 40, I could explain faxes to you afterwards too <laughs> as well. Yeah. So, so I've okay. kind of expanded this award to include uh, conflict of any kind. So uh, just to forewarn you, I've got three pages. <laughs> Of this, so I'll I'll go through it uh, as as quickly as I can. Uh, all right, the Warp Award for uh, Star Trek: First Contact. We've got Picard's Eye versus the Borg Drill at the very top of the movie. Uh, we've got Resistance versus Futility. We've got Picard's uh, Nap versus Bad Dreams. Uh, Picard's Contempt versus Starfleet Command. Uh, <laughs> the fleet versus the Borg cube the, at the Typhon sector. So this is Borg Battle One that we hear over the radio, basically. Picard so and that's crew. That's the first two minutes of the movie. <laughs> uh, Picard and crew versus direct orders. The fleet versus the Borg cube battle number two, which is at Earth. Worf versus bad day to live. Uh, <laughs> Worf versus staying in sick bay. Worf versus Riker's sense of humor. Star Trek versus Star Trek versus time travel. Uh, got Zephyrin versus sobriety. Uh, <laughs> we'll be there. You know, the Borg sphere versus the bar camp, which I think the movie calls the missile complex, but I'm going to keep calling it the bar camp. Uh, <laughs> I, it was a camp. I went to bar camp when I was at school. 
Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the Enterprise versus the the Borg Sphere. Uh, Picard and crew versus finally finding living people in the Phoenix silo. Uh, Lily and her gun versus Picard and Data. Uh, <laughs> everyone in the silo versus radiation. Uh, Crusher versus the prime. Crusher versus the prime directive lecture she was about to get from Picard. Uh, <laughs> Data versus perception of real. Uh, crew versus saving first warp flight. Uh, Paul the engineer versus assimilation. Uh, the redheaded engineer versus assimilation. Crusher versus Borg wanting to get into sickbay. Uh, Lily versus waking up on the ship. Uh, the EMH doctor, the doctor from Voyager uh, versus the Borg. We didn't see him die. Didn't see him die. Saw him. His uh, weapon of choice was an anesthetic cream. Anesthetic cream. Mm. All they work, mate. They work. Yeah. Uh, Lily versus good sense in that she uh, stopped following Crusher <laughs> when they were escaping. Uh, mm. Zephyrin versus Riker when he threw a beer bottle at him for turning off the music. Uh, Zephyrin and dreams versus the good stuff. That's when he was. <laughs> or Zephyrin and Deanna Troy. That's what it is. Uh, Deanna versus being drunk. The Enterprise crew versus assimilation. Now, uh, I gave that 14 points. <laughs> uh, Data versus his feelings of anxiety. Worf versus the Borg's face. Data versus Borg drones. That's six points right there. Data versus assimilation. Uh, Picard versus help, please, security officer, the one that he shot. Uh, Lily versus Picard, Borg versus Data's encryption codes, Borg drills versus Data's face, uh, Riker and gang versus Zephyrin versus the truth of who they actually are. It's when Riker tells them that they're from space adventures from the future. Uh, the screenplay make versus making a character actually say the name of the show. Mm. Huzzah! We like that. You're some kind of astronauts on a Star Trek. Uh, <laughs> Lily versus reality of being in space. Lily versus her first ray gun. Data versus <laughs> stimulation. <laughs> uh, Neelix versus the Borg. Yes. <laughs> uh, Ruby versus the. Uh... Mm -mm -mm. I can't Just read my handwriting. Everyone. Oh, Ruby versus the broad in the holodeck. Ruby. Uh, mm. versus uh, never a good time. Uh, Borg versus the holograms because they were throwing holograms out of the way. Picard with the Tommy gun versus the Borgs on the holodeck, uh, including Ensign Lynch. Uh, mm. Barkley, Reginald Barkley versus self control. <laughs> <laughs> He's never won that one. Uh, Worf versus zero G. Data versus mm. uh, the Queen, round two. Data versus childish protection of his new flesh. That's when they scratch his arm and he's trying to protect it. Um, 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 um. Data versus Borg Queen, sexual advances. Uh, the battle of the interplexing beacon. <laughs> oh. uh, Zephyrin versus not wanting to be a statue. Uh, Lieutenant Hawk versus not being carried away by a Borg. <laughs> <laughs> On a yeah. Uh, Worf versus magnetic constrictors. Worf versus suit decompression. Borg Hawk versus Picard's face mask. Uh, Worf's assimilate this gets five points mm. just for being so badass. Yeah. <laughs> badass. Uh, Zephyrin versus four alarm hangover. Uh, <laughs> Zephyrin versus the future version of himself. Worf versus Picard versus being a coward. Worf is not... Uh, um... Oh, Worf versus not murdering Picard is what I wrote. Uh, Lily versus Crusher. <laughs> Lily versus Picard. You son of a bitch all the way to the Moby Dick. Uh, Picard versus regret <laughs> for saying mean things to Worf. Star Trek First Contact versus digital media storage in the 21st century. <laughs> because uh, Zephyrin has that little futuristic CD he sticks to it. Yeah. Um, Zephyrin versus the majesty of space. Picard versus the queen. Data's new haircut versus my giggling. Uh, Borg versus the phoenix. Queen versus Data's betrayal. Data versus uh, smashed warp coolant. Because when he smashes the warp coolant, 
tube. It blows him across the room. Uh, uh, we're getting to the end here. Patrick Stewart's guns versus the Equinox gym. <laughs> He's got some. Stewart's got some big guns in this movie. It, it was Joe McCall, Joe McClain there at the end. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, the Queen versus the Coolant, the Collective versus the Melted Queen. They all blew up because uh, the Queen melted. Um, the Enterprise HVAC versus the Coolant. It sucked all the coolant out. Uh, Patrick Stewart's guns again versus Queen Terminator Skull Spine. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Uh, Zephyrin versus Vulcan Salute because he can't quite get it. Uh, Picard and Gang versus Discreet Exit, and then Vulcans versus Whiskey. And boogie woogie. <laughs> wow. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mark Hardier. Well, what do you say to that? Now, Mark, you just cut out at the start there. Do you mind giving us the list again? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we don't nope. know. <laughs> I'll, I'll just post a screenshot. <laughs> yeah. He's going to fax it, remember? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. I did hear Isaac and Andrew. We didn't fight. We didn't fight not, this week. Not yet. Yeah. But, the, but we're only about halfway through the episode. Exactly. We've got plenty of time. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. Lily versus geography. Oh, now oh. we just Lily versus geography. That was a learning experience. I, I did want to point out that everyone here is in this movie, yeah. except for Mark. Yeah, he wasn't in it. Did, I was, we didn't uh, see North America. We didn't. We, we, we saw a little bit of it. We didn't see California. No, no. No one does. Yeah, anyway, yeah. We'll, we'll pivot. Okay, the, the next medal is the Neelix medal, which is the, uh, another one that I was looking out for, named after our favourite chef in all of Star Trek. I've been looking out for food and drink this week. So I had um, popcorn and Coke, thanks to the good guys here at Wine Cinema. Nice. Thank nice. you. <laughs> nice. Um, Zephyrin Cochran's drink counter throughout this movie. <laughs> so he gets 500 points. Yep. Um, cool. He called it the good stuff. And, yeah, you could tell he meant it. Oh, that, yeah. that was method acting right there. Until, um, until he drank it. Yeah, that's right. There was also tequila and martinis. On the holodeck, I thought I saw some scones near, what was the guy with the nose again? Nikki. Nikki the nose. Nikki the nose. I thought there might have been some scones oh. um, there in the background. But, okay. Yeah, we, we might need to put it on again to watch it. Do we mind watching it again? <laughs> Just to see if there's any scones. Yeah. The card should have thrown scones at the board. Oh, well, yes. But well, the safeties were off. They're exactly yeah, right. Have yeah. you ever been hit by a scone? No. no. Don't well, get, well, well, once. Don't get hit by a scone, okay? <laughs> I've been, I've been scone. <laughs> They're just really stale, basically. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Scones yeah. can be too. Yeah. 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 They, they should. Enough, they enough. should, kid. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the Neelix medal. All right. So we pivot back to Mark for the Grudge medal. Now, for those that watch New Trek, Grudge is the name of the cat in Discovery. She is a queen, and she is oh. the best animal in all of Star Trek. She's a Maine Coon. Yeah, she is. Absolutely. Um, and our, our man Hogan's actually got one of those. Right. Um, Thomas Wayne. Oh, exactly yeah. right. Uh, so Mark has been looking out for any pets or animals this week. Now, he takes a quite a liberal stroke on what the definition of pet might be, mm. and I'm thinking that he might have just seen one or two pets this week. Mark, what have you got for us? Uh, my list is considerably shorter for this one. Oh, that, that's very oh, small. I'm disappointed. <laughs> yeah, I, I was no. so distracted by all the wharf stuff going on <laughs> that right. I... Uh, uh, all right, so grudge metal. Uh, Locutus is the Borg Queen's pet right out of the gate. Yeah, uh, you can see that coming. There's a dog at the bar camp. Uh, uh, it shows up Four times, so four <laughs> points for the dog. Uh, Data is the board queen's pet. Uh, Neelix's mustache. He's got a pet mustache. <laughs> yeah. I it's it a was little, a looks like a little pencil mustache. It was very cute. Uh, mm. There's a second dog at the bar camp. So second dog got a point. That was exciting. Uh, Zephyrin's got a Zephyrin's got a pet flask that he carries around with him everywhere. <laughs> uh, Picard begs the queen to be her pet again. Uh, the Oh, make it so is the Picard pet phrase that ended the movie. And then uh, I have to give uh, an, a point to uh, the uh, Moby Dick quote. Uh, if his chest were a cannon, that, that little speech is uh star trek first contacts pet literature quote <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
It ain't a Star Trek movie if there ain't a literature quote. Well, and it might not be a Star Trek movie without whales. This could be the other one with the whales. Of course. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> this is cooler than the one with the whales. Mm. Oh, Although con- that is cool. Controversial. Yeah. 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 Okay. And that is an amazing list, Mark. Mm. Yeah. I know. Mark. <laughs> of course yeah. you do. And I have the Tuvix medal, which is awarded for anyone that died this week. And because it's Star Trek, you could die all the time in Star Trek. The person okay. on our, the number one on our leaderboard has died 54 times. That's Captain Lorca, and it all happened in one episode. Um, so I, I was watching with this in mind. And I don't know if you guys thought it too, but Hawk on the bridge at the start, and you just see him and go, he's not going to last. Yeah. <laughs> I just, see, I just said, yeah. I just said, that's Neil McDonough. Yeah, Neil I'm, McDonough's I'm, a cool actor. I'm like, I know that one. I know that one. I know that. Who's that guy? I know that one. I know that one. I know that one. Whereas I said, yeah. I said, he's been in heaps of TV shows. <laughs> yeah. So he got a point. The Admiral's ship, um, which I'm assuming the Admiral was on, um, that well, got that destroyed. Would, that would make sense. So, so that's a death. Yeah. Uh, we've got the Borg Cube. Yeah. Um, I called it the campsite. But with the Borg firing on it at mm. the start, there was things flying everywhere. Two of Mark's dogs everywhere. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like on a bike? <laughs> but like on a bike. Thank yeah. you. The, Trevor on a bike. Yeah. Trevor on a bike. Uh, the, the Borg sphere um, got blown up. I also wrote down someone, uh, I think it might have been Doc Crusher, said they're all dead. I thought, well, that's worthy of a two weeks point. And it's also very good diagnosis. And- yeah, that's diagnosing. <laughs> she was yeah, wrong. Yeah. I'm diagnosing. Yeah, yeah. English, I've, I've got a friend who works in the medical industry. Englishing is Englishing yeah. is hard for you, mate. Yeah. yeah. Paul died. He Paul. became a Borg. He went up in, oh, into Paul, the Jeffrey's tube. Oh, yes. And then Paul's friend went, oh, there's no sound. I'll go up there too. Of course. So <laughs> Paul's because friend Because this is the movie screen. Mm. Yeah. Um, Data snapped the neck of a Borg drone. Mm. Lynch. Can anyone remember Lynch? Anyone Ensign remember Lynch? Lynch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 Picard blew like, him away with a Tommy gun. That's yeah. what you do. You, you got to kill Ensign Lynch. And what I would like to make a point about Lynch, right? So at the near the end, Picard goes, "I've got to go back and save Data because this whole crew risked their lives for me." And we oh. all went, "Yeah," but none of us went, "What about Lynch?" <laughs> yeah, we didn't risk it for Lynch, did we? We only risk it for the important or, seven. Or, or <laughs> more important, none of us went. Hang on, at the start, you told us if we meet any of our mates who've been mm. turned into Borgs, just shoot them. They'll, in fact, they'll be better off. Oh, they'll be better off. Yeah. If, yeah. If, if you shoot, I wasn't better off. I got, I got fixed. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> we've got, yeah. we've got the model ships died when, when he, Picard broke, broke the cabinet. He, yeah. Broke his little ships. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the Borg queen ships. died. Mm. Yeah. And there was a Borg on the deflector dish that, well, several. I think they got blown away or just drifted off. But if you're drifting off, we've got to assume they're going to die because there's no sustenance in space. One of the problems with that scene is that I think those Borg were clearly dumb dumbs. Like that's what oh, they were careful, saying. mate. No, that's why that was language. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid dumb dumb. Whoa, whoa. Because, hear me, hear me out, right, because th- I think that when you're a Borg, you can take the whole uh, we'll ignore you until we consider you a threat a little bit too far. Like if you're on the outside of the ship trying to convert the deflector dish into an interplexing beacon and mm. three Starfleet dudes turn up in <laughs> space suits, I think they're there to be a threat. Like, I don't think they're there for a holiday. No, no. Oh, like a Borg, postcard. Borg one. Borg one. Hey, check those three guys. They're just going for a stroll. Are they, are they, is that a problem? No, no. no, no just, go. just just keep yeah. keep going, Gary. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> Gary's like, a Borg. And they waited <laughs> until, like, they didn't even wait until, like, like they didn't go, oh, hang on. I think if they are unlock that shit, this is all going to fly off into space. They were like, now let's wait until they've almost unlocked it. So they were pretty dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. you reckon the Borg are Aussie trainees? Oh, yes, the Borg, <laughs> the Borg are by definition. <laughs> Aussie tradies, just barely enough work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just do do the bare minimum. Yeah, look busy. And be on Smoko yeah, quite yeah, a lot. Yeah. Now, this movie was, was, was a good movie, right? Really good. We all enjoy it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But we watch it with an analytical. It's not just all jokes here with Hogan. He's got a, he's got a big brain in him there. Yeah. He, so he, he watches it with the with the this is how can we improve it with a saucer separation? So we all remember that the Enterprise D particularly mm. can separate saucer. In fact, the movie before this one, it did it. It did. It yeah. did not it did it didn't end well. But it separated. It certainly did. Yeah. Um, so Mr. Hogan looks at how the movie could be improved or, or episode, how it could be improved by a source of separation. I'm sure we all know here the fact that in the original series, TOS, the Enterprise Saucer was meant to be able to separate. Gene Roddenberry wrote that in the Bible for the writers. They just never did it because it was going to be just too expensive. Star Trek Bible or Bible Bible? 
I think Star Trek Bible. <laughs> okay, sure. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's probably in the other Bible. It might be. Yeah, and, near the back. And, and Jesus, near the back. <laughs> and Jesus said, "Thou shalt separate, thou saucer." Um, so, but you'll be disappointed to know that I've actually got a really sensible reason for oh, this one this week. Yeah, actually, we move on to the next thing. No, no shut no. up. <laughs> because can we? The board, the Enterprise D, only separated its saucer three times. First times encounter at Far Point mm -hmm. for literally no reason, like just because, well, we fucking better tell people we can do this. Mm -hmm. All right. Last time was Star Trek Generations mm -hmm. where it crashed. Oh, it parked. Oh, okay, yeah. so that's yeah. the way you yeah. park. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Get well, out of my way. I'm parking here. I think, well, yeah. I, think, well, I think it actually mic dropped onto the planet. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, true. Drop. Yeah, while Deanna was driving. Yeah, that's right. Ooh, touchy, touchy segment. But the middle time, the middle time it separated was in Best of Both Worlds, mm. part one. Mm -hmm. And what was it doing? Finding a Borg cube. So it should have been standard Starfleet procedure. The moment you encounter and engage a Borg cube, you separate the saucer. You just do it. Mm. You don't even know what... But that's see, that, that's where you're wrong. Okay, because I thought about this, right? You see, because <laughs> the Borg, right? I knew someone would say that. <laughs> Big brain on me, right? Because then the Borg would go, "Oh, I bet they sep I bet they don't separate the saucer because they've done that before." The old switcheroo. The switcheroo, mm. and then and then suddenly every starship separates its saucer in the Battle of Earth, and the Borg are like, well, "Bugger me, what are we doing now?" Yeah, we better go home. <laughs> There's twice yeah. as many of these bastards now. Better so, go I, I, home. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're anticipating it because didn't they only like take half the decks and then when yeah. they stopped at like deck 11? Yeah, totally. It's because they didn't want to get separated. But all those ships should have separated their sources and then it's a bit like, but, but you know, the, like all the, all the unionised Borg would have been saying, you Titus, we were only fighting 32 ships and now we're fighting 64 ships, so come on, double pay. Double pay, Queen. Double pay, yeah. yeah. And Queen would have been all like, yeah, no, that's not how it happens. Yep. Yeah, and then they would have all, all gone on strike and then as Isaac already said, they would have pissed off home. Mm. I think we all agree this would have been a better movie. Would have been better. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, we're nearly at the end of the night, but we, we like to finish off with our, um, we do a little bit of a talk show. Oh. Um, you, um, most people here, of course, being the nerds that you are, would have watched Star Ooh. Trek Nemesis. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we have Shins on, direct from the States here, to um, give us his thoughts on First Contact. How are you, Shins? I'm not bloody telling you, dickhead. Why am I here? Yep. No. <laughs> Good question. Why am I bloody here? I'd wondering that for weeks, mate. I'd like to watch the worst bloody movie ever. What did you think of the movie? Oh, shit. Why was it shit? Just because it was like your head. Right. Can, yeah. I, borrow, can I borrow your hat? No. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't wear a hat. I've got a fucking bald head like me dad. Mm. Have you met me dad? He's on like the card. I'm finding this really awkward because he's talking and he's talking and he's looking at me. No, he's, not. he's talking. He's yeah, talking. Yeah, anyway, yeah. I don't like you. Who are all these people? These are the audience. We've got Riker. We've got a Klingon warrior. Yeah, I don't like them either. Jack. Jack. Oh, I like Jack. <laughs> he's not bloody stupid like you are. Anyway, bye. See you, everybody. Bye. Well, bye, you guys, everybody. well, guys, that pretty much wraps us up for this episode. Before we leave, we do a weekly pod and we're just jumping into Discovery, which has just launched season five yesterday on Paramount. Mm. We will be doing an episode of that on um, Sunday morning, our time, Saturday afternoon, Mark's time, uh, where we will be doing this format, looking at the first two episodes of season five. And if you like that, we'll be going on weekly um, in the same kind of pattern. You can find a lot of our content on the Shuttle Pod Show YouTube channel or the Unplanned Trek channel or wherever you get your podcasts. If you just want to listen to us and don't really want to look at us, and smart I can understand move. that smart move. Yeah, probably is it probably is yeah. the smart move. Yeah. Um, until then, this has been a sensational night. Yes. Uh, happy first contact day to everybody. Um, everybody, hey. gets, uh, say goodbye to the audience. Yep. <laughs> and a, a big thanks to Mark for getting up early to celebrate first contact day with us, and of course, Graz and the team here at Rewind Cinema. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, Later, skater. Live long and prospect. <laughs> Live long. Thanks, and... everyone. Do something. And we're going away now. Okay, bye. Thanks.